I do that? No, we'll see. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is another beautiful day. I tell you what, there is not a cloud in the sky. I don't know how some people feel about that, but I kind of like it. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It looks like one of those days where the world's ahead of you and, you know, the only thing stopping you is yourself. And because of that, that's why I wanted to go ahead and, you know, bust this podcast out. Plus, plus, I got the house to myself today. Well, till like noon, till like noon, all right. My old lady, she got herself a, a nice little gig. And so, daddy's at home relaxing. He's going to be doing some podcasting. Because honestly, honestly, guys, I don't know what it is. She doesn't judge me. I mean, she judges. She judges the hell out of me. Love her to death. But she lets me do me. But even still, I feel like I can't do these good, decent podcasts uh, when there's anybody in the house. It's just... This is like my little diary. And for some reason, I want you all to see it. But for some reason, it makes me shy when she's in the house. I don't know. It, it, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's like, let me do me. I doubt you're going to watch this on YouTube. So, let me just do this. Yeah, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. To me, it makes sense. It's like, eh. You know, because if I'm just sitting here talking to myself and it's just quiet. Um, and she's just in the room watching Vampire Diaries. Which she does. Um, you know, I don't... I know she doesn't judge me, and I know that she doesn't think I'm stupid, um, but it's just one of those things, you know, I feel, uh, I think everybody does, when you have your creative space, I like it to be alone, I like me to do me by myself, that's how the juices work, you know, when I, uh, when I make my music, you know, I don't, I don't play it out loud. I don't anything like that. I in here, you know, and at the end, I'm like, all right, babe, you know your job. Get up, come check this bad boy out. Let me know what you think. Um, I gotta turn off the air conditioning. This boy is getting a little loud. Hold on. So, ah, man, I don't know. I hope you guys can't hear the landscapers because they are out. They are all out. All the grass ninjas are out and doing their thing, and they are destroying my allergies. I woke up this morning. It was just like, ugh, so bad, so, so bad. And I took my allergy medicine. Um, hopefully it kicks in in about half an hour. If not, you know. Daddy might have to take a COVID test, you know. Luckily, we got like forty of them in the in the cabinet because I don't know, they just keep getting sent to us. I'm a little suspicious about that, you know. I, I kind of want to go down the line and just do all of them and be like, how many of these am I going to get some fake positives and how many of these am I going to get some some false negatives or whatever, you know, false positives, false negatives. How many? So, out of fifty, how many says positive? Because then we could start working with ratios and we're like, all right, all right. You might have COVID, you know, that kind of thing. I don't. I feel great. No allergies, you know, it's just allergies. But, you know, you never know. Especially my daughter, she goes to, uh, you know, she goes to school again and, you know, school's back in session. And, you know, I like to go to stores and I like to get real up close to people and be like, And sometimes they'll like, they'll, they'll one up me. They're like, I'm buying ice cream. And I'm like, oh, well, and I wipe the, the, the tongue off my cheek and I'm like, well, thank you very much for that. I hope you enjoy your uh, cosmopolitan ice cream. You sweet, sweet soul, you. <laughs> oh, 
boy, it is a beautiful day though. It is, a, like I said, there's not a cloud in the sky. It just, it looks like hope. It looks like, uh, you know, the only thing that's holding you back is you. You know, it's just one of those days. Um, if you want success in life, nobody's going to give it to you. There is going to be people who aid you and help you and support you. But in the end, um, you know, like with my music, I'm the one that has to make it. I'm the one that has to, uh, you know, do the, the legwork that comes with it. Like, for example, if any of you are thinking about making music, um, just know that there, there's more to it than just making the music. Uh, you have to find a distribution company. You have to, you know, give your... You have to upload it up to YouTube and then give it a good description and then include all the links and this and that and the other so you don't get sued and yada, yada, yada. And it's a bunch of like little tiny things that just, you know, uh, I don't know if tedious is the word, but yeah, it, it um, let me get this. Yeah, there we go. Brighter blue. But the, um, there's a lot to it than just, all right, making music. Okay. Now, if you just want to be like a SoundCloud artist, that's fine. But even still, you got to go through the legwork of uploading it to SoundCloud, giving it the titles, giving it the names, doing the ID3 tags, doing this and that and the other, the descript. I mean, you're still going to be doing work, you know? Now, if you just want to make music and just save it on your computer, and listen to it on a rainy day easy just make the music and save it on the computer and wait for a rainy day you know that you literally don't have to do anything to make it rain you just wait and I don't know, that could be tedious for some so if you're trying to better your life if you're trying to move up and I apologize like I said these allergies are killing me oh big daddy's getting blasted if you, and I noticed my eyes are all red. No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay, cool. Yeah, allergies. Allergies. I haven't smoked the devil's lettuce in a while. I will say I uh, I partook in a doobster um, last weekend. You know, uh, I passed, I got certified in um, this course, and I worked my butt off for it. Nobody was home, you know, had the house to myself. I went ahead and I went down to the dispo, picked up a doobie, and uh, tried it out. I even made sure it was like low THC percentage, you know, because, you know, it's been a little bit. Not not too long, but like a, on my birthday, July 20th, I was like, no more. I gotta, I gotta be the ultimate me that I can be. So I cut that out. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and tried it, and it was just one of those things where I was like, yeah, I'm fucking, sorry, I'm blown. I, you know, I am just blitzed. Um, you know, that tolerance has definitely gone down, um, you know, like two, three drags, and I was like, Pfft. you know, it almost felt like uh, when the acid's about to kick in, for those that know. If you don't partake in that stuff, if you never partake in it, I strongly urge, don't even do it. Don't even get yourself started. I don't care what the cool, funny kids say. Keep yourself on the straight and narrow. I promise you taking care of you is the best investment that you could ever make. Um, but we'll pivot back. We'll pivot back on that on another note. But, so... Uh, COVID, 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 what was I saying? These allergies. Oh, yeah, making music. So, uh, again, if you just want to be a Spotify artist, da 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 da, you know, uh, I'm sorry, not Spotify artist. I'm a Spotify artist. And, again, that takes time. You got to learn. You have to educate yourself because there's a bunch of distribution companies and they all have different little things here and there. Um, that will that can get you in the, in the behind if you're not paying attention so for example my personal opinion 
if you want to make music, if you want to get out there and you want to be seen on Spotify, be heard on Apple, Apple Music, do TikToks to your music, uh, use your music for Instagram stories, whatever. I think I'm the only thing that I'm not on is Snapchat. Like, like I think, what the? I think Snapchat is the only uh, platform that I'm not on. And personally, I'm okay with that because that's where all like the whores are. Um, my music isn't for the whores, uh, it's, uh, you know, you get, it, it, that's, Snapchat is a dirty, sinful place, that is a nasty, nasty place, you get hit up all the time, hey daddy, here's my pictures, add me on OnlyFans, you know, I might add you, I might not, but, again, Snapchat is not the place, um, that I really care about my music being on. Um, it, it's just a bunch of ratchet, thoughty business, or um, just eh, people that haven't made the switch over to Instagram for whatever reason. Now I get that Instagram is ran by Facebook or Meta, um, but it's just a it's a better platform for promoting yourself and being seen um, from and being discovered, honestly. So if, if, you know, you're trying to get in the music world, that kind of thing, save yourself some, some time and build yourself up on Instagram. That's my personal opinion. And then also get yourself set up with a good distribution company. Okay. So I personally, and you hear it all the time from everybody, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I might catch the flag, but it doesn't bother me because in the end, you can find my music everywhere, everywhere. Um, but I use DistroKid, and the reason for that is they don't take any royalties. Um, it's seriously just I have to pay forty-five dollars every year um, annual fee, or else my music gets taken off. Now, with that being said, there is also what's called a legacy fee, where you can. Uh, like for an album it's like fifty dollars uh a track i think is like you know uh seven dollars nine dollars something like that if you're doing like a single but if you're doing like an album it's about fifty dollars but what happens is if you pay that legacy fee then they will not remove the music if you don't make your annual payment so god forbid something happens you know, knocking on wood, if I was to die, I would have, you know, I, I would be dead, so it would have, you know, but if I was to die, somebody I know would have to know my username and password and keep up with my payments every year, or, you know, they do the legacy fee. Now, that is, that's really it. That's really it. Um, with that comes little promotion uh, they call it promo posters, and it's just like a picture uh, of your album or whatever. And it is uh, out now, and it's on Spotify. It, it looks really cool. They also have like little promo videos, like little tiny videos, little snippets, and they'll play your song. Really, really good deal. Now, if you're out there and you're working with like Atlantic Records or something like that, Obviously, you're going to be using something else. Um, there's another company that's based out of New York. I forgot what they were called. Um, I wanted to work with them, see what was good, but that one was big money. That one is the one where you go when you're actually like a legit signed artist. You're a full-time musician, and you're hitting the bangers. But by that time, you already have an agent. You already have a team of people who are going to do this for you and your only job then is to make the music so if you are thinking about going and making music then understand that there is work to it and I'm not anywhere I'm seriously I'm at if I was to put myself one to ten ten being you know you know famous on whatever and you, you know 
you hear me on everything and one being you're just starting out and you're making music on your computer I'm at like a two I'm at like a two um, I have like three albums uh, the, the, like two albums another one's about to be released I have you know some odd singles things of that nature and you know, I have my distribution company. I have a little bit of a, a base going on, yada, yada, yada. But again, I'm no Jay-Z. I'm not anywhere near there. Um, it's just the way it is. My money is a lot different. And so I have to personally invest a lot more money into this. Um, I guess you could say. Because they get money. They get money, but it's mostly also... You need to use that money to make your next album. You need to use that money to support and fund your upcoming tour. Um, unfortunately, there's artists that don't know this, that don't understand this, or kind of they're just they they haven't matured enough to grasp that. And that's when you'll get artists that they got the big check. And then all of a sudden, next year, where did they go? Well, now they're broke and they're working, you know, at Walmart or wherever because they just didn't handle their money right. You know, I strongly recommend getting yourself an accountant, getting yourself a financial advisor when you start getting up to, you know, higher points. Um, otherwise, if you're still new in the game, and you want to take that 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 first step into being, you know, a uh, a professional artist. Go with DistroKid. Um, they're not even paying me. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, I put in the music. I give them the clip work or the the artwork for the album. Uh, you know, I type in you know what's the song called, and then I upload the song. And it takes, you know, you want to give about four weeks for the song to be fully uploaded and put on to the uh, to the available stores. Um, and they they usually do it pretty quickly, but it's just like give four weeks time just in case there's any hiccups, anything of that nature. So um, I always will plan it out to be like the first or the fifteenth of the following month. If I have my album complete and ready, like say it's the first of, you know, it's the, uh, it's about to be the first of September. I have my self-titled Astro Blue album that's coming out tomorrow, right? Yeah, today's the thirty-first of August. It's coming out September thirty or September first. If I had another album, I would set it to be released on. October 1st or October 15th depending on if there's any work that needs to be done with it now Strongly strongly recommend getting yourself uh, Multiple good speakers if that makes sense like get yourself a good set of headphones These are just some Chinese things I bought off of Amazon for like 20 30 bucks um, but you could get uh how I put it, you want to make sure you check different audio sources because, for example, these they kind of cut out those really high, sharp trebles. Um, for people that own like skull candies, you know, very good, solid, solid bass, you know, and it sounds it sounds good. And you're like, dude, these are only 20 bucks, but again, they will also cut out the high, sharp trebles. So if you're like doing a mixing and mastering and you're doing it and you're using the Skull Candies, because that's what I used on my first album. Um, if you do that, you're going to find that sometimes your snares are a little too loud. Sometimes your hi-hats, it's a little too much. And that will cause a little bit of bad feedback when it comes game time. Um, this most recent album uh, Astro Blue um, my girlfriend bless her sweet heart you know because I was like dude I listened to my album in my friend's car and the you know he's you know again this is that different speaker thing um, I noticed things that I it, you didn't hear before um, like 
one of my singles called Flywheel sounds super good in these bad boys. But if I listen on some decent speakers, there is a loud high pitch noise that for some reason just goes throughout the whole song. And it's it's so disappointing because the song is so good but there's just like this loud high pitched whistle that kind of just creeps in the middle throughout the whole song and it just makes it unusable unlovable you know it's one of those like oh 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 okay there we go I was trying to turn my phone off in the airplane mode let me do that let me see here airplane mode I've got people trying to message me I don't want that so the uh, I went back and I was like babe I can't I don't hear what I can hear in his truck you know so I had gotten a, a new car it's got Bluetooth I connected my she was like use the Bluetooth on the laptop use it in the car and I was like holy crap you're a genius because those speakers are pretty good pretty solid and in the end I want people to listen to it in the car so if it sounds good in my car chances are it's going to sound good in your car I don't have Bose speakers in the car I don't have broken speakers in the car I just have solid speakers you know the bass hits there's no subs it's just boom um, like I said none of the speakers are broken there's no cracking, there's none of that, so it kind of holds out. And uh, so I mix and mastered on there. And it definitely made a difference. It definitely made a huge difference. Just from going from that, and then I checked it with my headphones, and it was like, there it is. There's that bass that I need. There's, you know, now those those sharp notes, the, it, it's gone. So get on that. Do multiple sources for your for your mastering. Like if it sounds good in here, make sure it sounds good in your other headphones, or maybe just like plug it into something and hear it from there. And then you know check in your car. And uh, if you can get it to sound good all three ways, all four ways, or whatever, you're solid. Now again, as you can see, I don't have monitor speakers. You know I'm not I'm not there yet. So. You know, once I can get those, then maybe I don't gotta start. You know, gotta I don't gotta do all these different sources for my mixing and mastering. But hey, this is you know this is what we do with what we got. This is how we make things happen. Because you know, if you don't have a good beginning investment capital, meaning you don't have a lot of money to just like throw into a bunch of equipment. And you're just doing the dang thing. Well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to figure some stuff out, and you're gonna have to make it work. My first, uh, pretty much all my albums, except for this Astro Blue, um, and then my singles Fire, Furion, and Frost. Everything was made on Fruity Loops Mobile, a fifteen dollar app on my phone, because I wanted to make music. I wanted that future for me and so I didn't have a laptop I couldn't afford you know getting one or funding uh, uh, budgeting for one or anything of the nature you know we all have our own life situations but if you have a dream if you have a passion for something there's always a workaround there's always a way and I want you that is listening, I want you to be motivated to do whatever it is that you want to do. Because for me, I firmly believe it, I'm not even being cocky. It's okay, you know, I'm making this work. As long as I keep trying, it is absolutely impossible to get worse. And I don't see myself not making it in the big music industry. It it just it's it would be impossible you know if i keep reaching out to people 
and this and that and the other and you just don't give up you keep working on your craft i'm i'm making this right here you know it's a it's a wednesday right now you know wednesday morning and here i am just doing a quick podcast saying howdy to people because i want this to work you know it, it's not going to happen overnight it's going to take a lot of time my first album was released new year's day of 2020 okay I'm not cool. I'm not big hip with the crowds. I'm not out there at the clubs. Hey, yo, check my music out. You know, I'm kind of just doing this organically. You know, just doing my dang thing. Somehow, somehow, I'm getting a following in Germany. And I'm getting a following in Istanbul. Very weird. Very crazy, you know. I don't know how or who found it, but that's the power of the internet. You know, a couple of my songs got put onto uh, some playlists and, you know, maybe somebody heard it and they truly liked it. And I know it is, I know it's not like a bot. And the reason why I say that is because it'll be like a few listens every day. Which is weird. It's not like a hundred listens a day. It's like between two and seven plays a day. Which means that there's one or two people that added this to their morning playlist. To their workout playlist. To their, you know, their daily life grind playlist. And now I'm a part of it. And so somewhere out there, shout out to Germany and Istanbul. If you guys, you know, whoever it is. Please shoot me some, you know, shoot me, uh, uh, don't, don't shoot me, but, um, you know, get in touch with me. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to talk. Um, as a matter of fact, in my new album, to show love to whoever it is in Istanbul that has me on their playlist and they're doing their thing, um... I created a track called Istanbul and it's just like hey I see you you love me guess what I love you I appreciate the love it you know I again I, I'm nowhere near in life where I'm able to be like pompous or uh, anything of that nature um, I am genuinely humbled and I genuinely appreciate my listeners. You know, I don't get hundreds of thousands or anything like that. My Spotify, I'm sitting with like uh, between 20 and 40 monthly followers or monthly listeners, as you would call it, you know. And for all those people, I'm sure a few of them, you know, I'm sure one of them is my mom. Thank you, mom. I love you. You know. I'm sure a few of them are some of my really good friends. And I thank you so much, you know. But there's those, the the two or three that they found me and now they've made me a part of their music collection. And that, that's what it's about. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for you to just hear my music and appreciate it like it or love it you know if you like it rock solid if you don't hey thanks for the listen thank you for checking me out anyways you know and this is genuinely where i'm at that's how i feel um one of my biggest dreams and i'm sure we've all had it anybody that's an aspiring musician artist this and that and the other is uh i want to be able to just, you know, I'm doing the song, and then I just have the crowd sing it, and then I go, you know, like that, that right there, to have thousands of people singing a song that came from your heart, your mind, your, you know, whatever you're feeling, and they were, they feel it too, like that is just, I love it, you, you cannot no amount of money there's no like there's no amount of money 
that I feel that can replace that feeling. I think that, in my opinion, as somebody who's always wanted to be a musician or an artist, that is the pinnacle of the game. I think that's when you've made it. So when you can do that, they go like that, and they just start singing, and they chant, and, and then there's, there's that, that badass part where like everyone stops playing, but the people, they just keep, they keep going. They keep, oh, like just, just think about that, that gives me the goosebumps, it's so powerful. You know, like I said, it's not about the money. If you want, if you're in it for the money, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of luck. Um, you could be one of those people that lives fast, die young, or you could be one of those people that their music lives on forever, you know, and that's what I want to be. My music doesn't really have any words in it. Uh, my last album, I had like an intro kind of going over what the Astro Blue was, you know, in my opinion. Um, but that's about it. Because um, it's, when you hear it, you know, you're like, well, what is this? You know, to me, it's just music. It's just music that I make with my synthesis. I don't need singing. You know, Beethoven... Mozart, Tchaikovsky, they didn't need singing, you know, and so, but we still, we still appreciate and love their music to this day, hundreds of years later. I don't know exactly when they're playing, maybe like 1800s, 1700s, maybe 1600s, nah, I don't think that far back, but you know what I'm saying? It's one of those like, do you want to be... You know, this, an artist that came up real quick because of the clout, you got a million dollars, and then everyone forgot about you. And again, you're working in Walmart at, in like 10 years. Or do you want to be someone that can be indicted, in, in, indicted, indiced? They could be put into the, the, the musical hall of fame. Yeah, that's what I'd like to be. I'd like to be in there and just, I'd like to be an inspiration for somebody because the music inspired me. Um, I used, you know, metalhead, but I'm not like a, it's too, it's too, it's too much for me. You know what I'm saying? I like thrash metal, um, um, like Pantera. Pantera, I think was like my limit for like, uh. Because really, in my opinion, the singer can really throw it off. Like, I've heard so many bands where I'm like, dude, you really let this guy destroy your album with his crappy, like, or like, like, calm down. Like, let me hear the music. I love that double bass. You get that ride cymbal going. And then, you know, the heavy guitar, you know, getting a good break. You know, when you're just like, fuck, you know, I want to ride on a horse into battle. I want war paint on my face. I want, I want to get some, you know, that's the, that's the music, you know, that's that metal. But then you, then you get the same, you're like, okay, now I will say. Shout out Devil Driver. Shout out Devil Driver. I will shout them out every single time because those guys are the exception. Because it all blends so well. The singer, uh, forgive me, forgot his name. Um, I want to say Simon. I want to say it was Simon. Um, he's the old lead singer for Cold Chamber, you know. And it was, his voice is just so, it's not, and it's not like, but it kind of is, but it kind of isn't, 
you know it's just this beautiful little in between kind of like uh all that remains always give them a shout out you know they have like that beautiful singing i'm not a fan of that but they're it, it really goes with the music perfectly and me who i am when i hear words in a song i don't sit there and actively like listen to the words it's always just kind of like in the back as an extra instrument and so it's like you know that's how it sounds to me it sounds like just another you got your guitar you got your drums you got your bass you got your you know your other percussion you got your keyboard and then you got your singer that you know they're all just playing notes you know i don't sit there and what is he saying what's the message of this song so because of that i don't have music plus also i'm not trying to sing i'm not trying to do all that um my music i don't i don't i don't know what the genre is uh, i've been told uh electro symphony which is pretty cool because it it, it is a composition of sorts um it's you know i'm i'm saying this person's gonna play that 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 put it all together and a one and a two and a one two three that's why i say it's kind of a composition um i'm i'm you know if i if i if i put in a singer i i'm not a fan of the the words and lyrics of of things it's always he hurt me, she hurt me, I love you, I don't love you, um, you know, I like music that kind of goes off the beaten path, if you're going to be doing lyrics and still sound good, um, Styx, really good at that, it's, it's, the Styx, they don't get the, the, the props that they should, um, they really kill it. They really do. Their music is just like Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. You know what I'm saying? I am the modern man. Secret, secret. I've got a secret. You know, who hides behind a plan? Secret, secret. I've got a secret that no one else can see. Like, who knows that that really means something else? You know, you're like, oh, it's like Rocket Man. It really means, you know, well. I'm not trying to get balls deep into what it means. It's music. It sounds like this. It must be this. Because that's music. I don't sit there and like try and think, you know, it, what do the drums mean when they're playing this? No. It's because it's it sounds good. You know, domo arigato, mister robato, domo domo, boo, 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 domo domo, boo, boo, boo. It's good. If it sounds good, feels good, tastes good, must be good. But again, um, I've had I've had a couple people that you know I was gonna I'm gonna work with, do vocals and stuff. I, nah, not a fan, not a fan, because it's always uh, you know what they produced was just that the woe is me, I'm so ba ba ba. I'm like no, dude. This is Astro Blue, baby. We're trying to be spacey in this. You know what I'm saying? Um, speaking of spacey, you know, I was thinking about like, hey, you know, everyone's got different terms for their uh, for their, uh, their their fans. You know, like a Slipknot, they call themselves maggots. Uh, uh, you know, just a bunch of you know, uh, Katy Perry fans. I don't know, Perryettes. I don't know, but like Astro Blue. You know, call yourselves the spirits or the astral spirits. You know, something like that. That'd be cool. You know, like, ah, because that's it, it's really all about that. It's not my music is not about earthbound stuff. This is bigger than that. You know, the problems you have on Earth, yada yada, yada that doesn't exist in the astral blue. The astral blue is just seriously music that sounds good. It's supposed to make you feel something. This album is specifically made and coordinated and composed and created and set up where if you're having a bad day 
or you're having any kind of day, even a great day, a worse day, a funny day, a smelly day, doesn't matter. At the end of this album, you will feel a hell of a lot better. You're going to feel refreshed. You're going to feel like all of this doesn't matter. That's what the Astro Blue is. It's, it's higher than the earthly stuff. And my music, it's simple. But it's about how it makes you feel. Just like Chicago drill music. It makes you feel some kind of way, doesn't it? Kind of makes you feel like you want to do something. This and that and the other. All right? Like if you're from O Block or whatever. And you're like, I'll be listening to the drill music. And then you, you know, it makes you want to go do something to people. That's what it is. My music is not that. My music, and not in a cocky way or anything like that, but it puts all that, ugh, get out of here. In the end, we're just spirits. We are just spirits floating to and fro, yada, yada, yada. I don't know what happens when we die, but I like to think that my music kind of kind of touches that, if that makes sense. Um... It's not, it's not like bro step, you know, dubstep where you're like, and you want to like fist pump and drop acid and, you know, just go nuts and you're, I'm fried fish, baby. It's not that. It's, it's a soundtrack to the spiritual world or something in the nature or whatever. And, uh, cause this stuff, I don't, I don't know how I come up with it. Like I sit down and I'm like, I'm going to make a song. And then I do. I don't know how it comes out. I don't, I'm like, oh, this sounds good. That sounds good. And I put it all together and I'm like, whoa, like this sounds really good. Um, for this album, uh, first song is called Genesis. That one I kind of, I don't know if you want to say premeditated on, um, but it's a little bit longer song. Uh, it was, I was trying to get it to be seven minutes to go over the seven days of creation, you know, when God created heaven and the earth and, pardon, not trying to get too religious or anything, but I was just like, okay, and then, but it goes to the eight minute mark, so at the end of that eight minute mark, when the song ends, I kind of make it a little bit symbolic by adding a heartbeat, you know, like that's life, that's life it's now doing its thing it started you know and then it goes to the next song and then the next song and then and then by the end of it you know because it's high energy from the get-go and then it just slowly brings you down and you're just like ah. wow my buddy listened to it and uh I, I can't blame him because it kind of made it happened to me as well, but it made him fall asleep. It hits something in your brain. It comforts you so much in a weird, strange way, kind of like a southern breakfast with biscuits and gravy and sausage and, and bacon and, and all this. And you're just like, ah, oh, you get the itis, you know, you just it's so soothing again, even though it's high energy. It's soothing and it hits you in all the right ways and you're just like, yeah, this is it. You could take a nap to it. You could do whatever you want to it. You could, you could run to it. You could draw to it and hopefully it will inspire you. It will make you think. It will make you wonder. It will make you ponder, you know, and there's no, so there's I don't want to say there's hidden meaning behind the song, behind the songs, um, but there kind of is. Um, all of my songs, I mean, just like for everybody, I think there's there's cool there's cool little fun facts with each song. Like, oh, this is how this was made. This is what I thought of when this was made. This is the idea I was going with this song, and yada yada yada. And, I want to do those videos, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that's, it's not for me to say, you know, it's art, 
You know, there's multiple reasons. There's multiple, you know, what does the Mona Lisa mean? Eh, who knows? Some people say Leonardo da Vinci made it, so the Mona Lisa gets mirrored into the Mona Lisa, and then it makes like this, this, uh, this black helmet knight or something like that. You know, like I guess there was like two years that Leonardo da Vinci was was unaccounted for in history. They have, they have history on this guy from birth till death, except for two. It was like two or three years. Again, this is in the 1500s during the Age of Enlightenment. Okay, this is when the church ruled everything. And, you know, if you were an artist, you would paint things that had to do with God and angels, things of that nature. And so Leonardo da Vinci, again, those two or three years, he disappeared and came back. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, I, all this you know, well, Leonardo da Vinci stuff. And if you don't know about Leonardo da Vinci, I highly recommend you check the guy out. Like, he is a genius in his own right. And to say that he may have been given extraterrestrial knowledge, that's a fair statement. Because those two years he disappeared, and then he came back, and all of a sudden he was just like, Whoop. he had a lot of out there knowledge and it was it was incredible um one of those cool things that he did that um i wouldn't say uh was terrest extraterrestrial given or whatever but he was uh during that time the uh the church they didn't allow autopsies or anything like that it wasn't it wasn't a thing you leave their body be so um he would pay off like you know, preachers or fathers or whoever, and they would let him go down there to the uh, the little under cataclysm, a cate catacomb of uh, of the church, and kind of work on one of the bodies because they would just store the bodies down there, not like stack them up, but they had like holes, and they would put them in there, and because of how cold it was and things like that, the bodies were pretty well preserved. And so he would pay them off, and then he would he would get to work and research. And that's how he had, you know, if you look in his in his journal, well, in his journal that he discusses and whatnot, it has all of that information. Because you would go like, how does he know about all this? Well, it's because he was risking life and limb for the sake of knowledge and education that's incredible it's absolutely incredible so if you if you don't um if you don't know much about leonardo da vinci besides you know he made uh you know he's one of the greatest in, uh inventors thinkers that ever came about and um had he actually been able to help us we would be you know 150 years or whatever further into the future like they say like 500 years and more advanced than we currently are um that kind of knowledge that kind of stuff just for me personally that's very intriguing um but that that extraterrestrial knowledge that i may have gotten who knows but it's really cool to think about it's really cool to think about this guy had knowledge that nobody else had. And this was during a time when, you know, you would get hung or killed for saying that the world is round. So with that said, he would have, uh, and this is, you know, hearsay, I guess you could say, um, he would have to try and... give answers in his paintings um like clues about reality of things i guess you could say so for example okay uh one of the other things was he uh his painting mentor was sick or something like that and so Leonardo da vinci was like i'll finish this for you and it was the moment when an angel came down to tell Mother Mary 
that she was going to be um, having a little baby Jesus, you know, having the Lord's kiddo. And, uh, you know, the angel's like down there just kind of like, hey, letting you know. And she's like in a garden and just like, oh, okay, you know, thank you. Somehow, some way, you know, 500 years later, we get this picture. We put it into an x ray. All of a sudden, that angel, it's not in the picture, you know. So, does it mean that angels aren't real? Does it mean, you know, we got it wrong? Who knows? But again, it's one of those things where, and also, how did he get paint that doesn't show up in an x ray? which was not invented again for about 500 years that little things like that you know you're like how you know he invented the plane the submarine the boat not, not the boat i'm sorry the the helicopter you know things like that he had sketches on the stuff uh, the tank um it, was, it never came to fruition it's that it's that ancient forbidden knowledge who knows who knows but one thing is for sure is uh, that stuff really intrigues me that stuff is is really cool and I would highly recommend checking out some of that um, I also picked out Doc Days Inferno picked that up at uh, Barnes & Noble shout out Barnes & Noble they had that for pretty cheap so, uh, going through that again, we read it in, uh, high school, uh, Greek mythology, very good book, you know, oh yeah, but this time around, it's, it's one of those, I'm appreciating it more for what it is, and it's just, dude, again, this guy, Dante, was made in the 15, uh, he was alive in the 1500s, same as Leonardo da Vinci during the Age of Enlightenment, and, uh, they're both actually, if I'm not mistaken, they're both from uh, from Italy. So, you know, very cool stuff. And Dante's Inferno, I highly recommend you read that. And for those that don't know, I'll just break it down for you real quick, baby. Dante writes himself as a character being guided through the different layers of hell by a, an individual, I believe his name was Virgil, um, Virgil, yeah, and Virgil's kind of like the grandfather, um, of wisdom, he's the, he's the source of knowledge in this, so as Dante's going, you know, he's like, why is this happening, and Virgil's like, well, it's because of this, and this, and that, and the other, and it's just like, dang, really good read, so, my music is, and I think a lot of music is is kind of like that. It's like it's not just music. There's a little bit more behind it. Uh, there's alternate meanings. But again, I don't use a singer to convey the message or anything like that. It's art, you know. It could just be boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. Or you could listen to it and you're like, I think he's actually going over the 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 days of creation and that's what that heartbeat is at the end that's life actually starting you know and then you look oh wow you know seven eight minutes that's got to be something you know little things like that and i'm not i said i'm not i'm not trying to be leonardo da vinci or anything like that but for me it's pretty cool to have meanings and whatnot behind this stuff but as an artist just like a, magic, a magician, I'll never reveal my secrets. I'll never tell why or anything like that. Um, sometimes it's just like I made this song and this is the first word that came to mind. It just sounds good like that. It's fair. You know, it's art. If I put up a, if I paint a vase with flowers and I call it a, the destruction of mankind people are going to read really deep into that they're like oh the flowers of the petals must be the, the, the vase color oh the, the table is talking about the the source of mankind no all right 
But if you just have a, a, a vase or vase with flowers in it, and you call it vase with flowers, well, fair enough. Because that's what it is, a vase with flowers or a vase. So that's a little bit about my music. If you are wanting to get into music, go with DistroKid. If you are fine with what you're doing, if, you know, this and that and the other, rock solid. You know, I just want to give you guys um, a little, little bit of tips from me. Because like I said, it's not about the money. It's about my art living forever. That's it. And uh, I honestly hope it does. I don't know how I'll do it in concert, you know, because I don't have any lyrics. So I can't be like, and then they're like, bloop, bloop, bleep, bloop, 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 bloop. like, it's just not going to work. But um, if people are like, you know, it, it, it inspired me to do this. It made me get out of this funk. It was my morning routine. I have to listen to this song every day you know because there's a song i have called proud um and i made this a couple years back but again that's the song that was found in istanbul that one pardon somebody has that on their morning playlist and i guarantee it makes them feel a certain type of way because they keep it on their playlist it's that's one of those songs that isn't just a song that's a song that uh it has i, I want to say meaning but it's also like you listen to it and you know what it is it's about just being proud it's you do you whatever it is doesn't matter and that's one thing that my parents used to tell me i don't care if you want to be a stripper i don't care if you want to be you know, a little lot lizard, you know, do what makes you happy and be the best that you can. And no matter what, be happy. They want me to be better than they, than they were. And I'm going to tell you what, those are some really, really hard shoes to fill. My dad served this country for 20 years. Um, I, I don't think I could ever come close to the greatness that he's he's put out in this world you know he's one of those guys that uh you know he went to high school went to the varsity football team and took the school to state championships and won it undefeated you know he's like a little tom brady then he went to the marines and he was just killing it killing it killing it killing it you know I'm out here just making blips and bloops on my computer. I'm not getting shot at. I'm not having to do push-ups. Nobody's counting score, you know. The only thing I have to do is just get my music in front of you. And if you like it, you like it. If not, hey, namaste, baby. You know, my mom, she is one of the most loving hard-working moms just like a lot she was a stay-at-home mom and you know what she wanted to have a you know a office job and come home to her little two-bedroom apartment have a little mini cooper and just live that that bachelorette kind of life you know but we kind of came along you know surprise surprise and it's it, it, she no way regrets it she's um she did the damn thing. She raised us in a really good people. Whether um, we do good or not with our lives, she put those values in us to where it's like, all right, I know what a clean house needs to look like. Like, if you come over to my house at any time, more often than not, but actually, no. I, it's going to be clean. Um, there might be like a little clutter, my, me, meaning like uh, the Xbox controller may not be where it should be. It might be just chilling on the couch. Um, 
there might be, uh, I don't know, like this hat. It's just chilling right here, you know, that kind of thing. Just little things like that. But overall, the house itself is clean. You know, it's it's tidy. And I want my house to look like it's on a magazine cover. Why? Because it's a representation of myself and my work ethics. You know. Holy crap. Abuelita's is coming. That's grandma in Spanish. Holy crap. Your grandma's coming. Everyone get the house clean. Holy crap. You know. You don't want to have guests over and your house is messy. Like, what does that say about you? So, it's one of those, she put in that self-discipline. And my dad, he put in, uh, this is what hard work looks like, you know. So, with those two together, I hope. <laughs> I hope to one day buy them a house, you know. Um, I know it's not about the money, but it's one of those things where, like, hey, you guys did a damn good job. And they have that parental guilt. They have that. And they both. Son I'm so sorry. Or what? No. Don't even. You guys did amazing. And you also also told me. Take the good lessons. And throw out the bad lessons. And do better than what we did. I have a little girl. And you know what? She's getting good grades in school. She's well-mannered. She's so kind. She has a beautiful, amazing heart. And she doesn't wish bad on anybody out there. I couldn't be more happy. I couldn't. And guess what? We got another kiddo on the way. So um, hopefully um, I can keep these good values going for the next one. You know, I'm 33 years old right now. You know, that means... I'll be like 50 when this next kid graduates, right? Let's see, 33, 8, I'm going to be 51, right? I think I'm going to be 51 when this little baby comes through, okay? So that's, uh, I'm not looking for towards the, uh, the infant years. They're so cute. Oh, my, that, that little fresh baby smell, that, oh, I love it. I love the little baby, you know? It was tough. It was very tough. But when you when you get to a certain age, you know, it kind of really stops being about the money. At least for me. It starts being, I just want to be happy. I want to enjoy the fruits of life. But I don't need a mega yacht. You know? You hear about all these, these kids that kill each other over clout they wanted to be rappers and then they pissed someone off and then they got gunned down that's not it that's not what I want you know yeah you made a million dollars but you also died at 24 that sucks I'm I can't even imagine the pain that your family goes through you know and it's not dissing them or anything of that nature. It's just that's the difference in the quality and the value of life that has changed. You know, back then I was, I was never about that. You know, I wanted to, I did want to be a rapper once upon a time. But it was more of, um, the, the art of rap and wordplay and the cadence that is what turned it into art for me because we could always just i'm sitting here at the park hey chilling with my dog bark hey you know we could all do it but it's something else when you can come up with really good wordplay and this and that and it becomes like a puzzle that one put together um like for example Enter Ace of Spades, got blades for days. Use that blade to serrate your arm, a great kid. Gotta be braced about me. What's that? What's your plan? Step into me, gonna get hurt less. My money, my money, my drama, my hunt, no problem. I'm just baby mama drama. All about my love, on a teacher tongue, hitting the longer manga, paranoia, go let insomnia stay up all night because it goes drops beats. And it goes like that forever. I made that when I was like 18, but I still remember it. And that for me, I really like that. Um, I like Bone Thugs, I like Tech Nine, I like Twista. Because it's very technical, it's very, um, it's just cool. It's cool. Instead of just, 
you know, slap on my knob, bitches and hoes, got this money, got these clothes, like, okay, great, but you're inviting attention to yourself, you're inviting others to kill you, or whatever, and, uh, that's not me, that's not what I'm about, um, like I said, I want to live on forever, I want my music to live on forever, um, the Beatles, they're gonna live on forever, Black Sabbath, they're gonna live on forever, uh, Steve Miller gonna live on forever um, Tupac he's gonna live on forever um, unfortunately you know of course he got gunned down I think he was like 21 or 23 24 you know like he's just a kid just a freaking kid but like when you look at him on the pictures he looks like a grown man this and that he's still a kid he had his whole life ahead of him He even made an album rapping over the over the phone from prison like what you know I want to inspire people to make music for the music and not for the money and I get it I get it times are tough and sorry the AC turned on but I get that times are tough and you want a way out and you know I've been there done that um, I cashed out I moved out to the middle of nowhere in, in Arizona and I just lived in the desert with my grandparents for like 10 years I had to start over at square one and during that start over in square one I had a little kiddo and it it made it harder I had to lift you know the weight of life itself got harder but made me into a better man by forcing me if you want that good life boy you're gonna have to push harder you got to push harder you're gonna have to lift more you know I'm so sorry if you can hear the landscapers man these guys oh man I swear every time I I think about doing a podcast they're like mm, today's the day daddy because normally they come on Friday don't know why they it's like Wednesday. You guys are a couple days too early or a couple days too late because they were not here last week. So, with my music, I want it to live on forever. I want it to be something that inspires people. I would like, I'm definitely nowhere near Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, uh, Tchaikovsky, any of those great composers, music performers, nowhere near. But, but I would like to be considered or seen as a new age composer, a version of them, somebody that lives on forever. I'm not going to live forever, but I hope that my music does. I hope in 200 years people are still listening to my, listening to my music. It'd be nice. It'd be great. And that's why I'm doing this. Again, if you're doing it for the money get yourself into accounting or something like that because where you work what your work is that's what you get if you work at mcdonald's you're going to get free burgers sometimes you know you sneak them out um you know if you work at the strip club as security you're going to see some free titties you know just the perks of the job Again, if you're doing like accounting and stuff like that, you go that avenue where your job is money, the money's going to come. You just got to get educated and you got to work. So with that said, I'm going to end it here on a high note. So high. And say thank you so much for listening, um, checking this out. Uh, please check out my, uh, my new album, self-titled Astro Blue. It is coming September 1st. And also, um, if you're having difficulties finding me on YouTube itself, it's weird. It's capital A, no spaces. It's just Astro Blue, but with a capital A. If you do lowercase a, which I was doing for the longest time, I took pride. I was like, Astro Blue, because there was none other out there. There was nobody out there. But lately... 
there's been people that have been popping up, Roblox kids, this and that and the other. Uh, they're trying to ask for blew it up. And uh, there's like this vest that's, the company is called Astral and the vest is a blue. So it's called the Astral Blue Vest. It's, I, I personally, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, so with that said, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day. I'm out.